Hi guys and welcome to The Voice of AI. My name is Chris Plant and in today's video I'll be showing you my top five tips for using Google's AI chatbot Bard to save you time. Bard is a 100% free service offered by Google and it has all the latest data connected to the internet and it's also accessible in over 100 countries. Now, if you're based in the EU and you want to know about getting around the limitation of using Bard in Europe, I can show you how to do that. Just click on the link above and have a watch of that video. For a while now, I haven't used the regular Google search. Well, because NLP, Natural Language Processing Chatbots, are way, way better. And as Bard is a much better version of Google search, you'll see why. Soon it's going to be even better with Google's new generative AI supercharged search engine also. And you can also learn all about the supercharged search engine up here too. Just click the link. But let's go and look now how best to use Google's Bard. So number one is the summary and how to summarize something. Bard can summarize complex news in simple wording and list form. It can conclude each item to give you a quick idea of what's happening. Okay, so here we are in Bard and let's just quickly put in our first prompt, which is summarize current AI news in simple style wording and in list form. Make a concise conclusion of each news item. So you can do this with any type of summary item that you would like. Here's the latest AI news, Microsoft releases Azure OpenAI, Kendrick Lamar uses deep fakes, and this is all the news. Okay, and if I wanted to ask, let's say for just regular news, I can just reset my chat up here on the left. Uh, let's just reset that. I prefer to start a new chat every time we're doing uh, um, a new request. And we just put that in the same again and just take out AI. So summarize the current news and we can get the same information again. And we can just get simply the news summaries. So German police conduct nationwide raids, new Chinese ambassador, France bans short haul flights, etc. So there you go. Easy as that. Okay, so number two. Bard can help create tables with documents on various topics. So let's create a table of the countries where Google Bard is available, and then let's compare it with OpenAI Chats GPT and Microsoft Bing 2. Okay, so let's put in our next prompt now. Where is Bard available to use currently? So hopefully we should get a list of countries here. Okay, so Bard is available in 180 countries and territories, available in English, Japanese, and Korean, okay. Uh, that's pretty interesting. So now we've entered make a table with the countries where Google Bard is available. Okay, so now we have the table. Let's put in the next prompt, which will be use this table with the countries where Google Bard is available and compare OpenAI, ChatGPT, and Microsoft Bing. Here we go. Okay, so here's our chart comparing the three OpenAI, Microsoft Bing, Google Bard. It shows us the availability in the countries, the languages it's available in, capabilities, strengths, and weaknesses. So that's pretty good. So that shows you how to make a table with reference information. Number three, of course, Google has always been great at tourist recommendations, and Bard is no exception. It's excellent for listing tourist attractions, restaurants, and other activities to do in a city. So in this piece, we're going to ask Bard to see if we can get a list of places in a city and recommend five restaurants nearby. Okay, so let's put in our next prompt. I'm visiting Munich, Germany next weekend. Give me a list of five places that I must see on my visit. Okay, and also name five restaurants nearby those places you suggested. Okay, so here we go. We've got our report now. Five places that you must see. Marienplatz, Residenz, Hofbrauhaus, the English Garden, or English Garden, Nymphenburger Palace, and that's great. And then look, the great thing is it's given me my five restaurants as well. So Augustina Keller, which is located near Marienplatz, which is the first one. And then we've got the Schlosswirtschaft Nymphenburg, so that's pretty cool. And you can see all of the different restaurants that it's just given us. And I hope you enjoy your visit. And that's cool. And now I'm going to take it one step further because I'm going to say, OK, make me a two day planner from Saturday and Sunday. Give it to me in table format and propose the arrival times. Let's have a look what it does. So for our possible two day weekend itinerary in Munich, we're going to start off on Saturday and visit Marienplatz. And then we're going to go to the residence afterwards. And then we're going to have lunch at the Augustina Keller. Then we're going to visit the Hofbräuhaus. House. It looks like there's going to be quite a bit of drinking that afternoon. And then we're going to take a walk in the English garden. And then in the evening, we're going to go to the Paulana am Nockerberg to have our evening meal. Oh, and it looks like we're going to go to a concert or a show at the Deutsches Theater. Then on Sunday, we're going to go to Nymphenburger Palace. Then we're going to have lunch at the Schlosswirtschaft Nymphenburg. And then we're going to visit the BMW Museum. 
and see the Olympic Park and then have dinner at the Almeister. Well, sounds like a pretty great weekend to me. And what about providing interpretation of data using statistics? Well, chatbots make it much easier for us to understand complex data by creating tables and graphs. So let's ask Bard to give us an example. Okay, so I've reset my chat and let's put in our prompt. Give a list of car production in Europe by country per capita. Okay, so let's see what it comes up with. So, for instance, Slovakia is the top. So production per 1,000 people, 185, 185 cars. Czech Republic, 176. Okay, sounds pretty interesting. Okay, so now let's make it a little bit, uh, little bit bigger. The search will add the US, the UK and China. Here's my list of US, UK and China everywhere. Slovakia still has the highest car production per capita in the world, followed by Czech Republic. Okay, so now let's have a look at the global statistics. Off we go. Okay, and you can see China is way out there on top, uh, followed by Japan and the United States, and then in Europe, Germany is the highest. Okay, and then what you can simply do is you could add more, so show the graph again uh, with Europe as a group, and you can see here that here is the whole of uh, Europe and the production in millions. So here you can see how you can provide the interpretation of data using these statistics. Okay, and point number five on my top five tips, brainstorming new ideas. Bard is great at this. It can use current events and rumors to help you brainstorm or come up with new ideas. So let's ask Bard to investigate rumors surrounding new AI products on the market and give us some ideas for blog posts on those topics. Okay, so now we're looking at brainstorming some new ideas. Look at the news and events and investigate rumors of new AI products on the market and give me some ideas for a blog post on those topics. Okay, this is really good for brainstorming and getting some good ideas of what to talk about. So let's have a look. So straight away, we've got some great ideas. The future of AI and marketing, the AI revolution in healthcare, AI in the workplace. So this is pretty cool. And then of course, I can go and Google that further, or I can just copy out what I want to do, or even make a table. And there we go, I've got my ideas for the next days. So those were my five top tips of how to get the best out of Bard. Thanks ever so much for watching the video. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel for more AI related content and tips and join me on the journey to unlock the potential of AI. If you've got any questions or any feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you all next time. All the very best. I'm Chris from The Voice of AI. Cheers and bye-bye now.